الحمد للہ وصلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد ولا علی و صحبہ وسلم اما بعد حبت فی اللہ پروفیسر صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سید من حسن الاسلام المرئی ترکه ما لا یعنی ہی سید فرام دی گڈ اسلام اف ا پرسن از لیونگ دوز افیئرز وچ ڈو ناٹ کنسرن ہم دس از ا ویری امپورٹنٹ حدیث حبت فی اللہ اینڈ اٹس ویری ریلیونٹ فار دا کوئک ٹاپک دیٹ آئی وانٹ ٹو مینشن اینڈ اسپیک اباؤٹ اینڈ This topic has to do with not getting involved in every fitna as we've mentioned countless times. To not involve yourself in those things which do not concern you. The Prophet ﷺ said, as I mentioned, that from the good Islam of a person, you know, from their, their, their good conduct, from their good Islam, their good morality, their, their iman, is leaving those things which don't concern them because those things that can don't concern you often they can con- they they either have two two uh ways of you having a relationship with them meaning that either yadurak o yanfa'ak that either something benefits you or it harms you and possibly a third that is just in the middle and there's no harm and there's no benefit and either way it's not from the affairs of ahl sunnah and the people of iman that every time the mashayikh have a disagreement that the people rush into that and get involved and this is what we find many of the youth and so this is really an address for those youth that are new to the dawah of ahl sunnah possibly new to islam to not involve yourself in every fitna. This is what the ulama say. And then, what did we just say? We just gave you a hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Don't get involved in everything because you see disputes between ulama of Ahlus Sunnah or one scholar from Ahlus Sunnah makes tabdi even of another scholar who is known for the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Don't even involve yourself. It's possibly not any benefit for you to involve yourself. And especially if you don't even have the language and the prerequisite knowledge even benefit from either of those ulama that all you rely is on the translations that are given to you so it's very important to concern ourselves with those things which are going to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this also goes with eating the flesh of the duaat that recently i made a video and i mentioned uh, uh the brother muhammad munir and some of the youth took exception to that said oh they tried to make excuses for me that oh he doesn't know uh what the scholar said probably about muhammad munir or what the major scholar said and i just want to mention that we've been dealing with these kind of things probably when some of you because these statements are delil for me or they hint to me or that they give me some indication that a person like this is probably very young in age possibly even in diapers when we were under the beards of some of the ulama meaning that we have had the opportunity to deal and hear a lot of these fitna these are old statements and the scholars have spoken and will continue to speak and there will always be different disagreements there will always be disagreements and there will always be criticisms and sometimes the criticisms are just and correct and sometimes the criticism are incorrect imam malik rahimahullah ta'ala said he said everyone kullu uh, kullu yusib wa yukhti illa hadha sahib hadha qabr he said what means and this is a that was a prayer phrase and it wasn't exactly the exact statement but he said what means and he was teaching in the haram of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he pointed to the grave of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said everyone gets things correct and gets things incorrect except the inhabitant of that grave meaning the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we follow his his judgments there's we don't have you know his judgments his statements are nusus they are text meaning we follow the book of allah and the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so even we love our ulama but sometimes you find from your from our ulama we find disagreements between two or three or four of our mashayikh they disagree with one another 
Sometimes you see a major scholar say something that goes against a scholar who has less status. The important point, don't involve yourself in all that fitna if you don't have any principles to even deal with that fitna. If you are only on the level of blind following everything uh, a sheikh says or mashayikh say, you don't have any ta'seel, ta'seel and masail, you don't have any uh, usul or foundation in looking at the issues and looking what was said and seeing how the questions were posed to see if there was justice because that's a chain. For example, the issue of Muhammad Munir or many of our du'a who have been talked about, unfortunately, or some of our du'a that have been talked about in the West. The scholars, for one, most of our scholars who they've talked to don't know the language of those people. So then someone who may have a beef with the individual or whatever will make a general question. Sheikh, we have someone in our country who's like this and like this and this and this. He said this and this and this. What's the hukum of this individual? Okay. So then they tried to get a fatwa. And there's many different ways people do this. So we're, we're not new to this. These are things that have been happening way before some of you were probably even born. That, this, that people have been trying to belittle and destroy the dawah in various countries through these means. And that's why you have to have some tools so you can look at what's being said. We don't just jump, oh, Sheikh so-and-so said about this uh, individual, his dawah is destroyed. We don't, no benefit from him. Let's just cut all that off. No. But rather the individual could have made a mistake. The Sheikh could have been given misinformation, which has happened countless times. I can, we could write books about it, and, and I hope you can hopefully take my word for it. And if you don't, just do your research and you'll find out through experience i promise you we see it it continues it'll happen after we're in the grave unfortunately so i want to read this quick statement uh which just gives us some some uh how we should deal with all this fitna with all and how we should be about representing the Tao of ahl sunnah what should the salafis be doing because we have issues with some of us who keep making the same mistakes of either being too harsh with the people and making people run away from the dawah. And then we have another group from amongst us who are so easy that they confuse the people that they sit with anyone at all times. And they, they associate with Salafia. So it's very important to have the those kawaid and those usul, those foundation principles. Here's what Sheikh uh <clears throat> Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Bedr al utaybi said, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said, and this is very important, and there's so many of the Mashaikh have been saying this. He said, amongst the Salafis today are those who cause the people to flee and test the people in their religion. They harm the Salafi minhads due to their disgusting statements and strange actions, due to their oppression and ignorance. In fact, due to their detested Hizbiyah, meaning that some Salafis fall into Hizbiyah. It's possible. We can fall into Hizbiyah. We can sometimes call to ourselves. We can sometimes call to our clique. We can sometimes call to our group of brothers, our group of sisters. SubhanAllah, if I were to relate some of the personal stories that we've seen, and what we've heard and what so many people have witnessed, some of the strangest things that are almost like cartoons when you hear how strange some of the people's behavior and how disgusting some people are. We know stories of women in Medina, brothers' wives testing other women and sending women to spy on other women to say, who, who did you have over to have tea with you? We don't know her for Salafia. Why are you sitting with sister so-and-so? If you sit with sister so-and-so again, we're going to boycott you. To me, these are the strangest things. We didn't do this in Jahiliyyah, and I just can't fathom that the deen al-haq, deen al-qayyimah, surat mustaqim has anything to do with this. This is the weird, I can't even describe this kind of strange behavior. Let's go back to what the sheikh said. He said, they harm the Salafi Minhaj due to their disgusting statements and strange actions, due to their oppression and ignorance. In fact, due to their detested Hizbiya for individuals and personalities. You better sit with us. You don't sit with us. You don't listen to us. I told you not to listen to this one. You did. You're out. You're off the dawah. You shouldn't sit with me. We're going to boycott you. 
really strange things. And these are things we witness in a place like Medina. Some strange sissy stuff. I don't know what others, I got some other words for it, but we, we don't use that language. But subhanAllah, very strange, strange behaviors. Hezbiyah is a disease. Uh, in fact, due to their detested hezbiyah for individuals and personalities, you better sit with us, you better sit with our brothers. The noble brothers said, subhanAllah, due to their criticizing people who when the same matter is found in who they love, they don't criticize. This is a type of hypocrisy. You criticize everyone else, but yet you and your boys, you and your crew, you and your his are practically infallible. There are individuals who act and behave like this, Allah is that. Then the Sheikh said, they harm the Salafi minhaj by propping up people of association and disassociation and love and hatred. How many pe times have we heard that if you don't join our clique, and they won't say clique, but they'll say, you better, if you want to make dawah in such and such locality, you have to get permission from the noble brothers. You have to be with the noble brothers. Or we're going to boycott you. I know many students of knowledge that have went through this, I, I, I personally, in the UK and in America. Very strange, strange behavior. And the people make al-wallah, well, bara based on individuals, based on groups. He said, to the extent that due to a person's closeness to them, they are given a certain pass to Salafia. Look at that. That, oh, you're Salafi because you agree with me in, in talking about so-and-so. This, look at, I want you to look at yourself. If you have these characteristics, or if you know people who have these characteristics, flee from those characteristics that it's not about, I don't care if you like my sheikh. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you like some people that I believe that are Salafi. Even with that point, I'm not going to make tibdi of you. I don't have that right. That's not my hop. That's not my right. I look at, I have to look at, principles in kawaid in the usul of ahl sunnah and i have to stay in my level in my place and leave those affairs a movement to the ulama and those grounded in knowledge who can do that but to rush and make a, a, a hukum on individuals and people we have to be careful about that it's a cautious thing and it requires taqwa and it requires al wa hikmah he said these people who they have propped up are not those whom the imams of the religion rely upon. Neither are they themselves from the major well-known imams. It can almost be said that this is detested hezbiya in the cloak of salafiyyah. Be careful, ahabatifillah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from kufr, shirk, nifaq, and hezbiya and bid'ah. And all those traits which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas, with thabat ala sunnah the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our many sins. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika na usuri gubi gwa ala ala staghfiru kulayl na alamu. Rabbana atir fi dunya hasana wa fi l'akhirati hasana wa kina dhab al-nar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al-nafiya, wa riskin tayyibah, wa amalim al-taqabbin. And may Allah forgive us all of our sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.